Do I even have to film this part? I feel like I've already done this. Alright, whatever. Welcome back. Tyler Osuda here with Titanium Fitness. And we're back again with another video, if you can believe it, right? I don't know how long it's going to take me to film, edit, produce, all this stuff, but shouldn't have been that long after the last video. Anyway, if you like this content and you want to see more of it, um, and you have any ideas or questions that might spur future videos, please drop me a comment down below because the creativity portion of this is frequently the hardest part for me. So it helps me tremendously if I have ideas in my comment section. If you follow me online, particularly on Instagram, you might know that I got into running during kind of the start of quarantine. And it's like the first sort of serious running I've done in maybe ever. Um, at some point, I thought it might be a cool goal to work out to a sub six minute mile. But I also still want to train and compete in bodybuilding and powerlifting. I have very specific goals in mind for like competing in powerlifting at the same time as running that six minute mile. But we've all heard that cardio steals your gains. So what exactly do you do if you want to improve both your endurance performance and your strength performance at the same time? Well, today we're going to find out. But before we can do that, a quick word from our sponsor. <laughs> yep, still me. Not cool enough to have a sponsor for this channel yet, but that's okay. If you're looking to take your fitness to the next level, if you're trying to build some muscle, build some strength, lose fat, or even just develop structures that help you succeed in general with all of these things, I do offer one-on-one -on -one coaching. This would include fully custom nutrition and training programming, weekly video calls just like this. We meet up on a video call, we talk about your training, all the data I'm gonna have you record, training footage, etc. All of these things, you make necessary changes, and then of course you'd have unlimited access to me via my coaching inbox. I've been doing this job now for eight years and I'm extremely confident that I can help most people get to where they're going. So if you're interested, feel free to check out the website. I'll put the link down below uh, and get in touch. Even if we don't end up working together, at the time of filming at least, I will say, I, uh, I do offer that first call for free. So we'll have a conversation, we'll figure out where you're at, we'll figure out if you're a good fit for what I offer. And if you are, great, we'll take that and run with it. And if not, even if we don't work together, what I can say is I will at least try my best to give you a sense of direction. So when you leave, you leave with a little bit more knowledge that you can take and hopefully get started with. All right, all right, all right, onto the video now. So making progress at both things, endurance and strength, requires that you train for both, obviously. But each type of training will interfere with the other. Uh, we can think about this in two different ways. So one is gonna be performance. The easiest way to understand this is to say that, you know, if you were to go for a hard run right now and then come back and we had to go through a squat workout afterward, your performance on those squats would suffer due to the fatigue from the run. And the same thing is true the other way around. If we had you squat now and then run later, you would still be fatigued from the squats and that would carry over and make you slower in your run. This one is kind of very intuitive, it's very obvious. And this is why we allow for rest periods between like sets of an exercise when we're doing resistance work. The other way where we might encounter that interference is in the adaptations from training. So just a reminder, training, for most of us anyway, is the means to a very specific end. If we use the example of resistance training, our goal is to stimulate muscle so that we can grow and increase strength over time. Uh, this type of training leads to adaptations that allow our muscles to produce a lot of force all at once without really much regard to the efficiency or the longevity of that force output. Whereas on the other hand, endurance training tasks our muscles with producing smaller amounts of force continuously over time, replenishing energy as needed to keep those contractions going. You can kind of compare this to like a dump truck and a cement pour where the dump truck, i.e. our muscles, are kind of dumping all that force at once in a giant amount and the cement pour is going to be more slowly over time pouring that force out gradually as needed. In the case of these adaptations, the literature does seem to back up this principle. For example, according to this 2012 meta-analysis of 21 published studies, the effect size for strength, hypertrophy, and power were all significantly smaller when comparing concurrent training, that is combined resistance and endurance training, to resistance training by itself. This means that if your primary goal were to be as jacked and as strong as possible, adding an endurance training will more than likely limit your results to some degree. 
If, on the other hand, your main goal were to improve aerobic capacity or athletic performance, as opposed to max force output as you'd have in a strength sport, you might actually benefit from concurrent training. For example, we've got this study of 26 basketball players, which showed that combining strength and endurance work into the same training program was more effective on VO2 max and strength and power output than either training modality by themselves. This meta-analysis here showed that incorporating a strength training mesocycle in running, cycling, cross-country skiing, and swimming athletes was associated with moderate improvements in middle and long distance performance. I realize that these are just a few examples, but to sum up, my current position based on the available evidence is that if you're an endurance athlete and you compete in an athletic sport or endurance sport, you would likely benefit from adding in some sort of resistance training. And this interference effect when managed properly would not be as big of a concern for you. If, however, you are, like me, a strength or physique athlete who has historically prioritized resistance type training, adding in endurance training would actually result in slower progress for those muscle building or strength building adaptations. Now that you're aware of this interference problem, all you have to do is just choose one thing, train for that one thing, forget everything else, be good at one thing, and you'd be happy that you're good at it for the rest of your life. No, I'm joking. Um, if you, for whatever reason, decide that you want to be good or be better across the board at multiple things, I get that, I admire that, I commend you, but you do have to understand it's going to be harder than doing one thing at a time. All that said, let's try to figure out how we can best mitigate that interference effect. The first thing we'll look into is the order of exercise. If we take this 2018 meta-analysis, uh, which pulled the available research on the effect of training sequence, what they found was that lower body one rep max was significantly higher when strength training preceded endurance training. On the other hand, training sequence had little to no effect on aerobic capacity. So it would seem that if you have to train both things, you should probably train your resistance first and then do your endurance afterward. My opinion might be skewed by the fact that I'm just not that fast yet, but for what it's worth, I think mentally it is probably going to be easier to do your resistance first and then follow that with endurance and obviously as we've seen here physically it's probably more beneficial to do your resistance first anyway the next factor we want to think about is time between training so in this study uh, they compared a 24 hour 8 hour and 4 hour gap between endurance and subsequent resistance training workouts and it was concluded that when aerobic training precedes strength the volume of work that can be performed is diminished for up to 8 hours uh, also of note, this impairment seems to be localized to the muscle groups involved in the aerobic train. So this might seem obvious, but allowing for more than 8 hours between your two types of training may help reduce any effect on your ability to perform. Also, whether or not you can allow for that much time, exercise selection can offset this effect as well. So if your chosen modality for endurance training were running, which is very lower body centric, you might choose to train your upper body after that. So let's say you went from lower body endurance to upper body resistance, you may not notice the same size of effect when it comes to that diminished performance. Next on our list of considerations is intensity. I know a lot of people in this sphere of strength and resistance training would tell you that high intensity is more appropriate for strength athletes because it is similar in demands. And because the demand is similar, there's not gonna be as much interference with that adaptation like we talked about earlier. And they'd be right. But it's not that simple. The big caveat here is that it kind of ignores the effect on performance and on injury risk. If you talk about performance kind of like we just were, if you were to do sprints today and you end up being sore from your sprints going into your next lower session, that's not gonna be good for your workout. It's not gonna make that lower session as productive when you're doing your endurance work. And granted, you could organize your training differently, which we'll come back to, but this still ignores the injury risk. If you are choosing, you know, whatever method for your cardio, for your endurance, and it's something that you're not super familiar with, that you're not well practiced with, and you push up to the highest intensity, you're increasing your risk for injury, not just due to like soft tissue, connective tissue damage, but also just accidents. You know, maybe you're sprinting and you trip because the ground's uneven and you're not used to sprinting yet. Um, these are things we have to consider because if you're prepping for a bodybuilding show or a powerlifting meet or strongman or really any 
important deadline. You can't afford to be taken out of training because you chose the wrong method of cardio that you're just not proficient at yet. There is actually some evidence that would suggest this stance on pairing high intensity endurance with resistance training um, doesn't make as much sense as a lot of people think. For example, we've got this study that very specifically looked into the effect of endurance training intensity on upper body strength, lower body strength, power, body comp, aerobic capacity, etc. when added alongside that resistance training. Basically what they saw is that both high intensity and moderate intensity continuous endurance training, they similarly affected all these metrics. And in fact, the endurance training, the total volume of training there may matter more than intensity if we're looking to mediate these negative effects. Because I wasn't able to find as much evidence in the specific topic of intensity and its effect on interference, I'm not quite to the point where I would say that a certain intensity is better than others, but I can say that it's not quite as simple as just do a hit because you're a strength athlete. So now that we know all this stuff, we kind of have to figure out how do we apply this in practice, right? The few things I want you to think about are history, priority, and practicality. On the note of history, we want to think about how much training you've done in either modality. Uh, also, how advanced are you in either modality? Uh, this matters because when you're quite new to anything, any sort of training, you're going to adapt very quickly, you're going to make progress seemingly, or it'll seem like you're making progress no matter what you do. So optimization matters a little bit less. And then as you continue to develop and you get to higher and higher levels of fitness with either your strength or muscle building or endurance, it's going to require a little more complexity, a little more refining to make sure that you are still being effective with that training. Priority. You kind of have to figure out what are your goals? and how important is each goal if they run counter to each other. You need to know for sure before you start programming which goal matters more because they probably don't matter exactly the same or if they do, you should program accordingly. Last thing and I would say perhaps the most important consideration is practicality. How much time and effort can you actually devote consistently to this thing? Very quickly, I'm gonna talk you through an example. I'm gonna use me because I know myself very well. Um, that first question, my training history, I've got 12 years of res resistance focused training under my belt for both strength and hypertrophy. Uh, I had a few years of sports as a kid, like I played golf when I was really young and athletic sports mixed in there as well, but nothing really as an adult. And then as far as the endurance half of this, my first mile test when I started taking running seriously at the beginning of this quarantine, my first mile test was seven minutes and 45 seconds. <laughs> Considering my priorities, I do want to compete in powerlifting. I have pretty lofty goals. I want to beat my previous best total when I was still competing back back in the day. <laughs> I want to beat my previous best total by a good margin uh, in the near future. And because that goal in my head is much, much harder, it's a much higher level than just breaking a six minute mile, that powerlifting stuff, that strength training is going to take priority. Also, considering how low my baseline was for endurance, endurance is gonna need quite a bit of work, but there is gonna be a slight difference in priority there where most of my training effort is gonna go into resistance and some of that is gonna be reserved for endurance. When it comes to the actual application or the practicality of this, I can train nearly every day considering my job. Uh, fitness is essentially my job, so I will plan for six days a week of training just because I always tell people that I coach, if you want to train six days, you need to plan for at least seven because inevitably life will happen. You're going to be throwing curveballs here and there. Something's going to come up. Something's going to get in the way. So you always account for that ahead of time. So in my case, I allow myself six days of training. That's what I hold myself to. At max, I can spend maybe two hours per day on training. That's including time to and from the gym as well. So I have to count that in. What this looks like on paper for me is going to be four resistance training days per week, two endurance training days. All of these resistance days are going to alternate between upper body and lower body focus. This means that I can hit every single muscle group at least twice throughout every week. And these endurance days are going to alternate between higher intensity um, with much shorter volume and then really, really high volume sessions, much lower intensities. In order, this is always going to go upper body resistance, lower body resistance, and then endurance repeat. Uh, the day off kind of just falls wherever it needs to to make things happen throughout the week. This is not meant to be a program that I want you guys to follow. I'm just taking you through an example in my case that so you have an idea as to how you might apply this to your own training if you are programming for yourself.
Obviously, your programming will vary based on your answers to the previous questions about your lifestyle and your priorities. All right, quickly, to recap before my battery dies in this camera, <laughs> the main issue we're trying to overcome is interference in both per session performance and adaptation from these sessions. We can manage this all via order of exercise, time spent between sessions, and relative intensity. While you may not progress as fast with your strength and muscle building goals as you did when you only trained for that, if you are willing to go through some thoughtful planning, you absolutely can make progress at both things, both modalities simultaneously. If you made it through to the end of this video, thank you for watching, I really appreciate you. Like I said, feel free to drop me a comment down below if you have any future ideas for videos. Um, like the video if you liked the video, subscribe if you haven't already, maybe turn on post notifications if you want to get the alert anytime I upload. I don't do it that frequently, so it's not going to be annoying in your notifications. Anyway, that's all I've got for this one, guys. Take care, stay safe, peace.